Hello, Earthlings. I have come from a galaxy far, far away to be with you today. Okay. More specifically, I have come from Chatsworth. <laughs> this month, we're talking about something important that God can do in us to change the world around us. With God's help, we can take initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Step one, we look around and see what needs to be done. Step two, we do something about it. And if you think about it, that's what Jesus did. When he saw something that needed to be done, he just did it. He healed people who needed healing. He fed people who were hungry. He helped people who were hurting. Jesus is a great example of having initiative. And so is the man we read about last week, Nehemiah. We have a big project waiting for us in our story today. It's the next part in the continuing story of Nehemiah. Just in case you need a refresher, here's what we talked about last week. <clears throat> Previously on Nehemiah. God's people had been captives in the Babylonian Empire for a very long time. The Babylonian Empire was taken over by the Persian Empire, and Nehemiah found himself in an important role in Persia as the king's cupbearer. Ooh. This meant that Nehemiah was in charge of making sure nobody poisoned the king. As a result, the king came to trust Nehemiah. When news came that the city wall of Jerusalem was destroyed and the people were defenseless, Nehemiah cried and prayed to God. Well, the king gave Nehemiah permission to go to Jerusalem. Nehemiah took a look at the city wall for himself and he realized something had to be done. He took initiative and rallied the people to fix it. I think we're gonna benefit from this one today. But before we get to that, let's watch this. Dear God, sorry I haven't written much lately. School started up and I guess things got started pretty fast. The first day at the bus stop was even crazy. Justin and Dean and JT were there and doing their usual. And then there was this new guy. At first, I didn't even notice. I was busy catching up with the guys again. I don't know why I didn't say anything to him. He was dressed a little different and nobody really talked to him. The truth is, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just thinking about my new classes, new teachers, well, all kinds of stuff. I couldn't help remembering what it was like when we first moved here. It wasn't that many years ago when I was at the bus stop by myself too. I remember thinking I'd never make any friends here. So the next day, I made sure to say hi. Carlos is okay. The first day he was doing stuff for registration, but we found out he's in a couple of my classes. It turns out he's into robotics. When I told him that JT and I had a team last year, it was pretty cool. God, I think you just sent a new friend. Thanks for helping me to see what needed to be done. Talk again soon, Lim. Welcome to another weekend at RPK Online. Our basic truth today is I should treat others the way that I want to be treated. And sometimes that means that we need to make a move, you know, towards kindness. Let's do it. I hope you're on your feet. I hope you're dancing. <laughs> All right, come on, let's sing. Help me God to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can't stand still. No, you have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. All my, all my life is yours. I will, I will make a move for you. Yours. Oh. 
up the call to serve you. You have given me a job to do. I want to love the world just like you. Cause you have given me purpose. supposed to do, guess who's going to help you with it? God. If we put our hope and our faith in him alone, he will be with us and he will help us to do whatever he wants us to do. Let's worship him right now and just sing to him. Let's raise our hands to him and sing in you alone. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. Let's sing that again. God of heaven and earth, you are amazing. You hold me up with your hand. You give me faith and I will put my hope in you alone, in you alone. declare that we will put our hope in you and we know that you are faithful 
to show us exactly what you want us to do. And when we find something that's not going right and we know that we should be helping to fix it, help us not to be shy, help us not to be worried or afraid because our hope is in you and you help us to take initiative and do what you want us to do and to make things right. Even when that means correcting something that we're doing wrong, God, if there is something in our lives today that we're doing wrong, would you show it to us so that we can fix it? We love you and we just praise you for your faithfulness. And in your son's name we pray today, amen. It's me, Jacob, and I may not be a real astronaut, but I still know a lot about initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. So, it's doing what needs to be done, yes. But first, you have to see what needs to be done. You have to look for the needs around you. They know all about this in space travel. Let's say, for instance, they decide to go from the Earth to the moon. They don't just get in their rockets, strap themselves in and take off. No. Hey fun, how do I get to the moon? No, they spend months, even years, planning for every trip. They prepare for things that might go wrong and have backup plans in place to help protect them. They look out for things that might get in their way, like other aircrafts or satellites. Ah, look out for that asteroid. <laughs> oh, that was a close one. They decide before they even start the trip exactly where they're gonna go and how they're gonna get there. They know exact. Aw, oh, man. I ruined the moon! That was not part of the plan. But good thing I had a backup plan. This moon is much sturdier. <laughs> In today's story, we'll hear more about Nehemiah who had a plan to make the city of Jerusalem stronger. And there was more to that plan than just rebuilding the wall. Nehemiah could have used a smartphone. Knock, knock, who's there? It's phone. Hey, phone, question. How do I make Jerusalem stronger? Or maybe not. I'll see you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Nehemiah had traveled all the way from the king's palace of Persia to the broken down city of Jerusalem. And there with God's help, he rallied all the Jews living there to begin the epic job of rebuilding that city's walls. Who's with me? I say, let's start rebuilding. <laughs> At first the work went well. Each family or group took a different part of the wall to work on. We're making record time. Nehemiah and the people even managed to ignore taunts and threats from neighboring nations who did not want to see that wall rebuilt. Uh, if a fox climbs on that pathetic thing, it'll fall right down. <laughs> the God of heaven will give us success. So it seemed like nothing was going to stop this big project until new trouble showed up. From inside the walls, a group of Jews in ragged cloaks came to look for Nehemiah where he was working on the wall. There's not enough food for everyone. We're, we're being forced to sell our fields and vineyards just to buy grain. There's hardly enough to keep us alive. The king's taxes are high. We have to borrow money, but, but then we can't even pay the high interest. Interest was extra money the people had to pay back. It was so high they could hardly keep any of the money they made. Who's making you do this? Other Jews, our own relatives. 
We even had to send our children to work for them as slaves. We have nothing left. Please help us. This is not right. It's not right at all. I'll take care of it. <sighs> Nehemiah was so angry that he didn't trust himself to act in the moment. Instead, he thought it over for a time. God, what do I do about this? His own people were mistreating those who had less. Nehemiah took this so seriously, he stopped work on the wall to call together the Jewish nobles and officials. What's this all about? Ah, better be good. Making us lose all this work time. It's not good. It's bad. You're charging your own people interest. It's not like it's that much. I mean, we can't loan money for free, right? Do you have to ask me this? Think about it. Many Jewish people were sold as slaves to other nations, and we had to buy them back and bring them home. Now, you're charging so much interest, they are forced to become slaves again. Oh. No one could argue with Nehemiah. They listened quietly to his next words. What you're doing is not right. We have to show respect for God. Look, I am lending money and grain to the people who need it, and so are my relatives, but we aren't charging any interest. So, what should we do now? If you've taken anything in payment, give it back. Fields, vineyards, olive groves, houses, give it all back. Even the interest that you've charged, do it now. God moved in the hearts of the people because instead of arguing, they agreed. We'll give it back. We won't make them give us anything else. We'll do just as you say. Very good. Nehemiah sent for the priests so that the nobles and officials could make this promise before God. You must keep this promise or God will deal with you. Amen. Amen. Immediately, the officials did as they said. Here are the papers. The vineyard is yours again. Oh, thank you. I've been working years to get it ready for a good harvest. I took too much. This is yours. This means my son can come home now. So once the nobles and officials made everything right, work on the wall began again, faster and stronger than before, now that everyone had what they needed. And Nehemiah continued to show his people how to treat each other, even though King Artaxerxes had appointed him governor. You know, all the other governors made the people pay them silver and give them lots of food and stuff, even land. That's too heavy a load to put on the people. Instead, Nehemiah dedicated himself to working on the wall. In fact, he even invited 150 people to eat food at his own table. Throughout his life, he always looked for ways to treat people fairly and make things right. The city of Jerusalem was in trouble because the walls had been broken down, but that wasn't the only thing that was broken. Nehemiah looked and saw that some of his people were being treated unfairly because they were poor, and he did something about it. He stood up for them and worked to make things more fair. Initiative starts with seeing what needs to be done, and more often than not, it starts with seeing who needs to be helped and what needs to be made right. That's one of the reasons Jesus is so amazing. He saw people. He showed people how valuable they were by loving them no matter what, and he inspired them to love others. We're called to love people too. We should stand up for people who are being treated unfairly because of the way they look, or where they're from, or how much money they have, or what they believe in. If you've ever been treated unfairly, then you know how it feels. It's not good, but maybe you also know how it feels when someone stands up for you, when someone's on your side. Standing up for people is one way we can make things more fair. We can make things right. And as one way, we can show others the love God has for the world. So here's the one thing to remember today. Look for ways to make things right. Make a plan. Decide before you start your day that you're going to look for the needs around you. And speaking of needs, it looks like I'm gonna need another moon. This one's just too delicious. <laughs> hmm. This moon tastes like cheese. I don't know. I'll see you next time. Oh, there's my face up.
All the other governors had made the people give them silver, food, and land. But Nehemiah didn't want to make things difficult for the people while they were taking on such a huge project. Instead, Nehemiah dedicated himself to working on the wall, and he made sure that people had what they needed, too. Do you know, he even invited 150 people to eat the food at his own table. And when Nehemiah saw that the people were treated unfairly, he stopped everything and took the time to make things right. I love seeing how Nehemiah took the initiative to make a difference for others. And remember, this all happened because Nehemiah took a look around. He didn't sit back and hope that things would get better. He did something about the problem. He stood up for the people who were being mistreated and made sure that the people who were mistreating them promised to stop. He really cared about the needs of others and he put them first. We can be a part of the work God is doing today. With God's help, we can see things that are wrong and work to make them right. That's something we can do too. And it's our bottom line today. Look for ways to make things right. If you see something wrong happening and you're not sure what to do, maybe you could talk to an adult about it, like a parent or a teacher. Or maybe you realize you've been treating someone unfairly or that you've been unkind. Maybe to your sister or brother or even a friend. You can make the first move and say you're sorry. You can take the initiative to make things right. Making things right is hard work but it's good work. It's the kind of work that God can do through each and every one of us. Let's look at our verse this month. Work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you were working for the Lord. Colossians 3:23a. Let's say it together. Work at everything you do with all your heart. Work as if you were working for the Lord. Colossians 3:23a. And we definitely need God's help to do that. So let's pray and talk to him now. Dear God, as we've learned about Nehemiah, we've seen how you can help us. The bottom line is you can help us look for ways to make things right. Help us look around and pay attention so we can see when people are treated unfairly or when something is happening around us that we know is wrong. Please give us the courage to speak up and use our voices to help others and not just think about ourselves. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today, friends. And remember, be on the lookout to help make things right.